Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Fellowship Bible Church this morning. So glad you are here. Hope you had a great Christmas celebration uh, yesterday. Uh, and we want to continue this celebration this morning by focusing on, on Jesus as our ultimate gift. In John 4, Jesus, uh, Jesus plants himself at a well, sends his disciples off to get some food, and he waits. And then we read, starting in verse 7, a woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it was that was saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him if he would have given you living water. Everyone who drinks of this water, this well water, will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. This woman is looking for water, which is uh, obviously a need. But what she found was God's greatest gift to her, his own son, eternal life found in him. So I know everybody's Xboxes and bikes and dollhouses are cool. Um, my kids got a Switch for Christmas. Um, and those are all fun and, and, and you know awesome to enjoy with other people. But Jesus is the gift that we come here to treasure and celebrate. So would you stand with us as we do just that this morning? Angels from the realms of glory bring your flight or all sang creation story now proclaim messiah's birth come and worship come and worship worship christ the newborn king shepherds in the fields abiding Watching o'er your flocks by night God with man is now residing Yonder shines the infant light Come and worship, come and worship Worship Christ the newborn King Emmanuel God who saves us, worthy of all our praises, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, come every way among us, we welcome you here. Welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Come and worship, worship Christ and you. God is with us, even now His love is here. Come and worship, worship Christ, the newborn King. God is with us, even now His love is here. His love is here, Amen. God who saves us, worthy of all our praises, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, come every way among us, you we 
welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Come and away among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken the light, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. Been faithful through every storm, you'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things, and I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things, God, you do great things. Hero of heaven, you conquer the grave, you free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken the light. Oh Jesus, our Savior, the name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. done great things oh hero of heaven you've conquered the grave you've captive and break every chain oh God you have done great things we dance in your freedom awaken the life oh Jesus our Savior your name lifted high oh God you have done great things. You have done great things. Oh God, you do great things. Hey, would you take some time before you have a seat and greet some people around you, wish them a, a late Merry Christmas.
All right. The, so there is kind of a natural wind down. I, I didn't yell, I just kind of waited for all that. So uh, that was about three minutes of greeting. So well done, good job. All right, quickly, before I make a couple of announcements, by, by um, I was gonna say a show of hands, but that's not, that's not gonna do. And yelling, let's not yell, but <laughs> how many of you, how many of you prefer Christmas in the 60s degrees? Yeah. Oh, come on. How many of you want 25 degrees? Lower. Damon says lower. <laughs> Man, I dug it yesterday. Personally, the kids got to go out, ride their bikes. That was the best. It is amazing that um, in the history that we've been, I mean, that's yesterday or Christmas Eve was probably our 18th Christmas Eve as a church. Um, we have had a lot of snow. We've had uh, a little snow. We've had no snow. And now we've had like Meli Kaliki Maka, right? It was like, <laughs> wow. That was, <laughs> I was fine with it. Um, if I had had a Christmas-themed Hawaiian shirt. I would have worn it uh, Friday night, but I didn't have one. Okay, first announcement. Someone, maybe not here today, but someone, I don't know how you got home or you have a car at home that you can't start. I have a Nissan. Come on up, Vicki, and get your... I really didn't intend for that to be an embarrassing moment for you, but <laughs> now you can get to work tomorrow. <laughs> All right, so announcement one has been taken care of. Announcement two, um, next Sunday, once again, 10 o'clock service only, we may have to put up a few extra chairs. Wonderful occasion of celebrating baptism with, at, at this point, last count, somewhere around 10, maybe even 11 people responding in baptism, in faith to baptism next Sunday. So you want to be here. It'll be a great celebration. Um, we're going to have the baptistry set up here in front. It's going to be uh, a wonderful time. It's not too late to let me know if this is a uh, a movement of the Spirit that you sense God leading you to in obedience to the command of Jesus to be baptized. So you can email the church office. You can email um, me. Uh, if you don't have an email address, go on the website. Just somehow get a hold of us, and we'll make sure that I get uh, uh, in, in contact with you, and we have a kind of a we're not having a class this Wednesday. That's it's probably going to be a little too difficult. But Damon has talked with the teenagers. I've talked with uh, the adults who are going to be baptized. I've talked um, with parents, uh, kids of parents who are going to be baptized. So we've been we've taken that care. We've taken care of that. But if you haven't uh, made that decision and you want to contact me this week, and we'll get in touch and we'll uh, we'll celebrate that with you next Sunday. One, again, one service next Sunday at the same time, 10 o'clock, all right? Um, we don't have bulletins to hand out, but you'll know, take note that in the coming um, months of January, it's going to be starting a, a busy uh, ministry time with a women's book study, a men's book study, um, so lots of things happening in the month of, of January, um, so just keep an eye out for that. We'll probably provide a a regular full-fledged bulletin next Sunday uh, to remind you of all the specifics, the times and the dates and everything. So, Jonathan...
Would you guys stand with us this morning as we continue to focus on Jesus, the very reason that we go out in the world and tell people about him, his grace and his mercy, his salvation for all peoples. Over me. Now my 
sending your son come to suffer at the hands of men his own creation come to die to, to wipe our entire slate every crime we commit against you out of existence that you now see us as blameless as holy as righteous in your sight and we have hope in your presence for all eternity thank you God in your name I pray amen may you see it Thank you, Zach and Megan. We are so glad you're here. I know it was a long day yesterday. I hope it was a good day yesterday. It was both of those in my house. And, and you could add loud to that as well, but it was all a good, a good loud for the most part. So welcome to the, uh, the day after Christmas, otherwise known as the, the day I get to preach in jeans. So, one of my favorite Sundays of the year. Okay, <laughs> this, may be, this may lead to an early retirement on my account, but I'm going to ask all the kids who brought a gift to go ahead and come on up, up here to the stage with your gift. Come on up. If, you've got, if you brought it with you, bring it with you. Come on up here. I have no idea what I'm in for. <laughs> Come on. Oh my. Wow. <laughs> That's not going to get me, is it? Will that attack me? No. Okay. All right. Now, we've got quite the collection here. Here's what I want to ask first. First of all, just raise your, your, your gift up so everyone can see what you, what you got, what you're bringing up here. All right, we got, <laughs> my grandson brought a gun. Um, <laughs> we've got books, we've got uh, dolls, we've got, I'm not even sure what some of these things are. And what, what is that? A dr well, it's a, okay, just a dragon. All right, I thought there was going to be some kind of raptor-ish type of title to that. Max was very uh, anxious to show me his microphone. His makes noise. Do any of your, your uh, toys make noise? If you have a toy that makes noise, what's that? You, your watch makes noise? Oh, I bet it does. I bet it does. It, it kind of makes all kinds of alarms and stuff. Did someone else, your, does your watch make noise, Annie? No. Yeah, yeah it does. I'm... Well, on games, sure, it still makes noise. Um, Case, where do you plug your? Where do you plug that in? <laughs> where, where does it plug in? Oh, it doesn't. Okay. Again, I'm just trying to take advantage of the fact that you're confused because your dad's a Raiders fan. But <laughs> here's the next question I have for you. Here's the question I have. Kids, how many of you had to put this toy together? Did anyone have, to, does anyone have something that you had to put together? Ethan, you got Legos. That dino, that, that, yeah, that dragon needed to be put together. Okay, it's a Lego too. I see, okay, you got something back there that needs to be put, all right. Next question. How many of you have already shared your toy with someone else? How many of you shared that toy happily? Caden, your hand comes down now. <laughs> you're my, you're, I love you, buddy. You're the best. Now, there's no bullets in that, are there? Okay, your mommy and daddy didn't let you bring bullets, right? Okay. Because you're a pretty good aim. You were shooting pretty good yesterday, weren't you? Yeah, all right. Okay. Um, someone, okay. Now, next question. 
who got you the, this gift, the, the gift that you've got up here with you? Who got it for you? Grandpa. Grandpa? Mom and dad. Mom and dad. Mom and dad. Mom and dad. Parents or grandparents? I completely and you don't, and what? I completely you, forget. you completely forget who got that for you. Yes. So you can just thank anyone that you see, because it could be it could have been me. It was probably not me. Whose farm? Your grandma and grandpa's farm. Okay, so someone who was there. Silas, who got that for you? My mom, but I don't know who this was from. Okay. I, how do you know it wasn't me? <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't me, Silas. It wasn't me. All right. Excellent. Guys, thanks for bringing those. Even my papa got me. I love it. It's all great. What are these things? Do they just pop or something? It's a poppet. Is it... They're poppets. Is it because you're in such high stress that you have to have something to pop? It's a fidget. So it's something you just do with your hands when you feel like you need to do something. And then you go to the other side and breathe pop it. All right. Are those Dalmatians? Love it. Love it. And you get to draw on that? Now... Can you draw on that for like the next 15 minutes? Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. You can go back to your parents now. All right? All right. Well, we're here, um, so we might as well redeem the time, and let's have a uh, a brief time in the Word. So um, we're not going to let any, uh, any gifts disturb us from that. If, and if people are playing next to you, just you can either borrow it or, or you can... Um, three truths about gifts. And the first truth that we need to understand about gifts comes from the book of James. And that is that God is a gift giver. In fact, I would, I, I think if you read Genesis through Revelation, if you've read the Bible, you, it wouldn't surprise you to say, God enjoys giving gifts, right? James tells us in chapter one, verse 17, every good gift, every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there's no variation or shadow due to change. Nothing good in the world has any other origin than God. Whether we recognize that, whether, whether people acknowledge that or not is beside the point. The truth is every good gift, every perfect gift comes from God, who's a gift giver. So that rain that falls when we need it is a gift of God. That, that, that moment in, in time where it seems like circumstances just work out right, we know is a gift of God and his timing. And his gifts then, we could say, are unequaled because no one can give perfect gifts like God. My wife is a close second, but still not, not there. His gifts are unequaled because his gifts have qualities to them that are eternal. His gifts run deeper than the, than the, than the physical. They're spiritual. His gifts have this sense of, of safety and security about them. So this is why Jesus told us in the Sermon on the Mount that we should store up treasures in heaven. We should, we should, we should think about eternal matters because the gifts of God will not spoil, rotten, or fade. They're eternal because they're, 
They're perfect. So the first thing we need to understand about this beauty of gift giving is that it starts with God and that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from him. Well, it doesn't surprise most of us in this room, but for those of you who might not know this, salvation, (laughs) the ultimate good and perfect gift is a gift of his grace then, right? And we know some of these passages, but let's review them again. In Romans 3, verse 23 and 24, Paul writes, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, every one of us in this room, and are justified by his grace as a gift to the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. I just love the way that that it's worded, this this grace that comes to us as a gift, simply because we're loved. The other passage that, again, most of us have known for a long time comes from, again, from Paul, his letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, This is not your own doing. What is it? It's the gift of God. Not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Salvation is not, folks, salvation is not this award for good behavior. Salvation is not the medal that that you, you, you get because you spelled more words correctly than your classmates. It is all grace. It is a gift. So that makes his, his grace unmerited. We'd like to think that we contributed something. We didn't contribute anything. It, just, it was given to us. Now, if we want to think in terms of, of merit... We just turn our Bibles from Romans 3 to Romans 6. Paul speaks about meritorious connections. The wages, what's due to you in life, the wages of sin is death. If you want to go on the merit system, (laughs) your sin will merit you death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It just blows the, the world's economy out of, out of whack, right? God's economy is, is different than everyone else's. He is the perfect gift giver. His greatest gift is grace. So it really kind of leaves us up to what do we do with this? What do we do with this gift? I, I don't know, parents, you tell me. <laughs> How long are these gifts going to stick around? Eventually, they're, something's gonna ha- they're going to get lost, right? They're going to get broken. For a time, they may be taken away <laughs> for behavior. It, you know, these gifts that, are, that came up here, so temporary. But, wh- you know, wh- what, do they, what do they do with them? Well... Once God saves us, he's not finished, he's not finished giving gifts. To those who come to faith, he gives the gift of the Holy Spirit, and that spirit works in us so that we can respond to the gift, give thanks for the gift, show appreciation for the gift. Again, not because we earned it, the merit is death. The merit system is death. Salvation is a free gift of grace. But what do we do with that free gift of grace and the gifts that he continues giving us? Again, Romans chapter 12. Verse 6, in speaking about these gifts of the Spirit, Paul writes, having gifts that differ 
according to the grace given to us, don't you love this next phrase? Let us use them. So you, if God's not finished giving gifts and he gives us these, these wonderful presents, if you will, of, from his spirit, we use them. And then he goes on to describe different, different ones. If it's prophecy, then in proportion to our faith. If it's service, we serve others. If, if it's teaching, the gift of teaching, then we teach. If, 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 if it's exhortation, we, we give exhortations, we encourage, and so forth. We use them. I like how Peter put it in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. As each has received a gift, there it is again, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. So ministry is a, it's a stewardship. Ministry is a, it's a, it's a sharing. That's, that's the thing that as little ones we're not so good at is that sharing part. But as believers, it's our desire. We, we get these gifts and we can't wait to share them. And so as a result, the church is unleashed. It begins with the unequaled gifts of God and the unmerited gift of his grace, which then unleashes the church to serve in this world. Happily, whether it's next door or whether it's in Western Asia, the gift is meant to be released and we're the ones to unleash it. What are you gonna do, church, with the gift? What will you do with God's gift? You know, as well, I, you know, in our reckoning, we, we, we're looking at a new calendar year, and there's, there is something significant to that, although, of course, God's not on a calendar. But maybe that's a really good question to ask ourselves. What might 2022 look like if we, if we purposefully, intentionally show our thanks for God's gift to us by unleashing that gift to the world. Let's pray. Father, it should not, cannot go without saying again and again, thank you. Thank you, God, for your gift of grace to us. Thank you that we did not have to work for it. We thank you that we don't deserve it, but it is, it is the perfect gift. And God, would you then do a, by your spirit, the, the, uh, continue the work in us that we would share the gift with everyone, anyone, because all have sinned, every one of us falls short. But the free gift of grace, the free gift of grace, God, is what people need. Use us as your instruments of that grace. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand as we sing of God's greatest gift to us? Shame that hear my 
Dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no. It's hard to keep in the forefront of our mind that God's gifts are the greatest. And they're also the ones that are given freely to us. Some of of our other gifts we feel we must earn or even do the right things to keep them. But God says, this is yours. Take it in faith and belief. Live in the light of his gift and use it to serve one another. So thank you for coming and celebrating that with us. Hope you have a uh, good rest of your holiday season, and I have to do it. We'll see you next year.